My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1247. Please turn to it. Page 1247. The very first problem that we see there, number 28. In 28 we are dealing with two inequalities. The first one says that the y has to be greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. And the second one says that the y has to be greater than half x minus 1. Our job here is to find the solution region for these two inequalities and tell them in which quadrant the solution does not fall. Because solution apparently falls in three of the four quadrants. Our job is to look at the quadrant in which the solution does not fall. So let's plot it. Quite straightforward. This one has a slope of 2. When x is equal to 0, y is going to be 1. When x is 0, y is 1. Let's put it here. And then because it has a slope of 2, when x is 1, y is going to be 3. When x is 1, y is going to be 3. 2, 3. Very straightforward, very simple. A steep line that looks something like this. Let's draw the next one. When x is 0, the y is negative 1 here. So y it starts from here. Y is negative 1 when x is 0. When x is 2, 2 is going to cancel out with 2. When x is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0. So when x is equal to 2 is where it cuts the x-axis. There we go. This one is greater than, so the region is going to fall up here. Not this part here. And that one right here is also greater. So the region is going to fall up there. So let's plot it in a horizontal way so we can see it. And as we do that, we find that the solution set that lies in this region right here. From here to here. And then from here to this part right here. All of these are solution set. As we can see, the solution set falls in quadrant 1. It definitely falls in quadrant 2. We see some part of it right here. We see, see some part of it from, from here to here. This region right here, quadrant 3. But as you can see, in quadrant number 4, the solution does not lie, which is what the question was. The question was, where does the solution does not lie? Page number 1247. One, Let me turn to it, see how it's worded. It says, which quadrant contains no solution? Well, it's quadrant number 4. Next problem, number number 29. In number 29, we are given a polynomial Px polynomial px such that when x is equal to 3 the value of this function is negative 2 and our job is to tell them which of the following which may be a factor of px there are four answer choices. Our job is to find, tell them which of the following may be a factor of px. Let's look at the very first one. Answer choice A says x minus 5. Now the only condition that we have to fulfill is that the, when x is equal to 3, the value of the function has to be negative 2. As you can see, when x is equal to when x is equal to 3, the value of the function here is negative 2. In other words, for all we know, for all we know, this px could be this entire thing. It says polynomial, which means an expression with several terms, but polynomial could have as few as two terms. A binomial is a polynomial, and so is trinomial, a quadratic equation. But it could be this. 
if this is the entire function, then it turns out that x minus 5 would definitely be a factor of px. It will be exactly 1. px divided by x minus 5 will be just 1. In other words, it's itself. 5 is a factor of 5. 13 is a factor of 13, so forth. Let's look at b. So a may be a factor of px. And b says, in b we are given x minus 2. x minus 2. Now if you were to put in 3 here, 3 minus 2, as we can see, is 1. It does not equal negative 2. But because it is 1, 3 minus 2 is just 1, we can multiply it with anything at all as long as we can get negative 2 here. In other words, for all we know, the function might be, the px might be x1, x minus 2 times x minus 5. And that will do the job. Because x minus 5 we just found out is negative 2. So 1 minus negative 2 would do the job. So now we find that if that's the case, uh, if, if our polynomial is this, then both x minus 2 and x minus 5, they are both factor of the function. Lucky for us, lucky for us, they were asking for one right answers. We are so clever, we have found two so far. Let's look at the third one. The third one says, answer to IC says, x plus 2. px is equal to x plus 2, let's just say. So p of 3 would simply be 3 plus 2, which is 5. We don't want 5, we want negative 5. Uh, we want negative 2, which can very easily rearrange. If we can multiply this thing by negative 2 over 5, we'll get the negative 2 for this function. In other words, maybe the p of x, this function that we're looking at, is not this, but rather it is x plus 2 times negative 2 over 5. If that's the case, we fulfill the condition. The p of 3 will be indeed, this is 5 and this is 5, it cancels out, will be indeed negative 2. And if, if the function of p, px, which, about which we know nothing at all, except that the fact that the value of the function is negative 2 when x is 3, that's all we know, it fulfills the condition. So if the function is this one, if the function that we do not know is, happens to be this one, then it turns out that x plus 2 would also be a factor of px. Oh, we, we, are, we are informed today. They ask, us, they ask us for one right answer, we found 3. And the problem is that, problem is that, on purpose, I wrote down the problem in a misleading way. It does not say which of the following may be a factor of px. The question actually says which of the following must be. All of these three, a, b, and c, a, b, and c, it is not beyond the realms of possibility that both all a, b, and c, all three of them, may be a factor of px, but they do not have to be necessarily. What must be true is what is stated to what must be true is what it is what is given to us, what is stated stated to us in answer choice D. D says D says that P of X divided by X minus three when p of x is divided by when p of x is divided by x minus 3 the remainder is negative 2 they tell us the remainder is negative 2 that is not a fluke that's not a coincidence it is by design the remainder is exactly negative 2 which is what the value of the function is when x is equal to 3 and we are dividing it by x minus 3 so what we're dealing with here is something like this. Px, Px can be anything. Px can be, as long as this part is x minus 3, as long as this part is x minus 3, it can be anything. Some other function qx. We don't know what the qx, it doesn't matter. As long as we subtract 2 from the, at the end. That's what the function looks like. So in this case, regardless of what this function is, when we divide this function, x minus 3 times some other function, minus 2, the remainder will always be 2 because it is by design. That's what the D says. And you can see here that in this case, P of 3, when X is equal to 3, 3 minus 3, when X is equal to 3, just 3 minus 3, this thing drops out times whatever that. It doesn't matter what this part is. It doesn't matter what the next function is. It will always be negative 2. Because 
0 times anything is 0 and this will always be negative so so d is the one that that has to be true all the time all the time it must be true I'm just going to give you one example just one simple example among the five other choices it doesn't matter which one we pick I'm going to quickly show you that this function maybe the p of x maybe the p of x is x minus 3 times let's see what do we see what do we see in answer choice a there you go x minus 5 I'm just going to make it up do you understand minus 2 that minus 2 has to be there that has to be there by design because that's the remainder we are told that when we divide this function by x minus 3 the remainder is negative 2 so that's where this negative 2 is coming from so as long as we have this negative 2 we'll see that if we divide this function if we divide this function by x minus 3 the remainder is going to be negative 2 I'm going to show you very quickly so here we get x squared negative 5x and negative 3x and negative 8x and negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15 and negative 2 is going to give us positive 13 let's divide this guy by x minus 3 and let's see what happens and then you can play around with it yourself you have three other choices there you can do the combinations you can do the combination let's divide we need to multiply this by x x times x is going to give us x squared negative 3 times x is going to give us negative 3x this is positive so we're going to subtract it we're going to subtract this bottom part from the top part so x squared cancels out negative 8x and a positive 3x is going to give us negative 5x and a positive 13 we have negative 5x is here we have just x so we're going to have negative 5 of course we can have negative 5 that's what it is x minus 3 x minus 3 times times x minus 5 and at the end we'll have a negative 2 left over so negative 5 times x is negative 5x and negative 3 and a negative 5 negative 3 and negative 5 is going to be positive 15 change the sign because we're subtracting it this is going to drop out positive 13 and negative 15 is negative 2 there we go so you can play around with it and you will find well, it doesn't matter it, it, it makes absolutely no difference at all it absolutely makes no difference at all what the other function is absolutely makes no difference whatsoever it could be anything at all as long as you insert negative 2 at the end then you're forcing it by definition the remainder will be negative 2 and why are we putting negative 2 there because that's what our situation d says and if that's the case it has to be true because the value of the function in x is 3 we are told is negative 2 when when x is 3 the given problem tells us that when x is 3 the value of the function is negative 2 when x is 3 3 minus 3 zeros and this drops out answer is d d is the only statement that is something that must be true it has to be true because the value of the function is negative 2 when x is 3 and we are told that when we divide it by x minus 3 the remainder is negative 2 and x minus 3 is coming from the fact that uh, p of 3 is negative 2 so that was it let's do the next one let's do the next one I had to be a little careful because it's still too hard, the T. In, in, in number 30, we're looking for equation of parabola in vertex form. Equation of parabola that is given to us here, we are told that it crosses, it crosses x-axis at negative 3 and a positive 5. And they actually go on, they, in the problem itself, they actually go on to tell you what the equation of this parabola is. But that's not something we need it. They, 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 I don't know why they give it to us, we don't need it. We can figure out the equation of the parabola from here. This is the vertex here and we are told that the vertex is at positive 1. If you look at the picture properly, mine of course is not drawn in a very pretty way, but if you look at the picture in the, in the book you will see that it falls at positive 1. Let's find out the equation of it. The x-intercept are negative 3 and positive 5 which means y has to equal to x plus 3 y plus 3 we'll talk about that in a second and x minus 5 
this is plus 5, this has to be minus 5. Why plus 3? Because when x is equal to negative 3, when x is equal to negative 3, we know it cuts the, cuts the, the parabola cuts the x-axis, which means when x is negative 3, the value of the y is 0. Therefore, when x is negative 3 here, this has to be positive 3, because negative 3 and positive 3 will kill each other, it will become 0. And 0 times anything is 0, y is 0. Similarly, this has to be x minus 5, not x plus 5. This is 5. It has to be x minus 5, because when x is positive 5, when x is positive 5, y is 0. As you can see, when x is positive 5, x minus 5, which is why it's minus 5 and not a plus 5. Because plus 5 will not give us 0 here. x minus 5 is what we're looking for. When x is positive 5, positive 5 minus a 5 will give us 0. If this is 0, it doesn't matter what this is. The whole thing, y is equal to 0. So that's our equation. But this equation, but this equation, the way it is written, it's not in, in, in vertex form. It is in intercept form, x-intercept form. We just talked about it. We have to somehow get from here to the vertex form. We know already x-coordinate of it. x-coordinate is 1. We just have to figure out the y-coordinate. What is the y-coordinate of this vertex? Let's find out, shall we? The y-coordinate is very easy to find out when x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, it's just 1 plus 3 and 1 minus 5. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 times negative 4, it looks like it's negative 16. It is negative 16. There you go. As soon as we know the word, as soon as we know the coordinates of the vertex, we can write it in a vertex form. If you want to write this equation in the vertex form, it will simply be y is equal to x. Again, this is positive 1, so it's going to be negative 1 squared minus 16. There we go. And that is answer choice D. The question is how do we make a transition from here to there? How do we make a transition from here to here? Let's find out. So we have x squared minus 5x and a positive 3x is going to give us negative 2x and positive 3x, positive 3 and a negative 5 is going to give us negative 15 and that's our y. We're going to, we're going to find the vertex form by doing what is known as completing the square. Completing the square. In other words, we have x squared, we have negative 2x. If you can write this thing as y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1, but there you go, that's a complete square. This part here is x minus 1 whole square. And then we have a negative 15. And since, since we just added one here, since we just added one here, we need to undo it by taking away one. Because that one wasn't there. That one wasn't there, we introduced it to complete the square. Since we added it, we have to subtract it to undo it. Negative 15 and negative 1 is negative 16 which is what we just found out when we put, put in, which, which, is, which is what we found out when we put in 1 for the x coordinate here. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 times 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, which is what this is, which is the y coordinate of the vertex. So the equation in the vertex form is right here. And that is our last answer choice, D. We'll stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. I will pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at just visit my website, kashwaniprep.com. Send me an email, we'll talk some more. I can help you with the grammar portion, which has to do with the writing part. I can help you with the vocabulary, uh, vocabulary part, and I can most certainly help you with the math portion if you wish to work with me. Just send me an email. Okay? Bye now.